Hello amazing art friends! Today we are going to take a wrestle with landscape painting using only three colors. This will be a good opportunity to get to practice your color mixing skills. Or perhaps you can say color theory in action. And we will be painting this together. And I also just want to mention that you can find the sketch on my Patreon page. I have put it there and you can get it uh, for free for downloading to your uh, devices. And last in the video, if you go to that part, I will show you how I press my watercolor paper. Because as you will see in this video, it was a little bit bulky once I had finished uh, painting the landscape. So last in the video, you can find out how I press my watercolor paper once I have uh, painted on it. But enough of me talking, let's get started. I'm Miriam, an artist residing in beautiful Denmark. I do paintings in watercolor, gouache, acrylics, well, pretty much any medium I can lay my hands on. I'm here to help you learn how to make beautiful paintings and learn different skills in mainly watercolor, but also mixed media. Come, join me and let's paint some beautiful paintings together. If I can do it, you can do it. Okay, so these are the three colors we're going to use for this painting. The first one is called, um, it's very hard to say, Aurelian Yellow. Aurelian Yellow? <laughs> Uh, if you don't have that color, you can use cadmium yellow. Then I have some burnt orange here. And if you don't have that, you can just use whatever orange you have in your color palette. And this is the ultramarine blue. Most people will, will have that in their color palette. So, yes, so these are the colors. And here on the back side of this color chart, I have made some different mixes. This is the ultramarine mixed with the, the burnt orange. And then we get this, these brown colors that we are going to use in this painting as well. And these colors are the yellow mixed with the orange. You can get some different hues here. So that we will use in the painting as well. And this I should actually do like this <laughs> uh, we are not going to use the mix between yellow and blue so none of that but all of this so let's get started to begin with i wet the sky area with clean water and I make sure that I get a lot of water uh, on the paper because I want it to be uh, wet for a while because I would like to work uh, wet in wet when uh, we are going to put in the colors in the sky. So then I go in with the Aurelian yellow and now you can see a little better what I'm doing. And then I go in with the burnt orange. Um, I always begin with the lightest color first um, and you don't have to be careful around the trees because uh, we will put darker paint on later on. Then I go in with the blue color, the ultramarine blue. And I make sure that I have different brush strokes in the sky so it will look a little bit alive. Uh, yeah, and I just swirl in if you can say that. Uh, in the sky with my brush and the color I just yeah put it in and now I have made a dark mix between the blue and the orange and I put that into the sky as well it's an evening sky so there will be it will be quite dark and of course, there will be yellow orange around the sunset or the sun going down in the horizon. And here I just put in a little bit more of the orange and the yellow. Now I lift off some paint again. Um, 
Uh, I want there to be very light where the sun is going down in the horizon, so I just go in with a dry brush and lift off some paint. And this paper that I'm using is half cotton paper, so it really uh, is very good when you want to lift off paint. And now I tilt my board uh, so I can allow the colors to flow together and mix on the paper. This gives a very nice sky effect in my opinion. And I go in again and lift off some paint. This is just a dry brush or a dry damp brush I'm using and I'm just correcting a little bit in the sky. The colors of the paper is still wet so the colors will flow together on the paper. So you can get away with a lot of things right at the moment when the paper is this wet. I just go in with a little more dark color because it almost disappeared before. And I again make sure to have different brush strokes uh, in the sky. Whoops. I accidentally put some blue down in the sun. We don't want that. We want this to be quite light. And now I'm wetting the lower half of the paper. And I'm using my big size 12 brush. I almost always use this brush. Uh, it's the best one I have for the job, I think. <laughs> so, and the color keeps running into the sun. So now I grab myself some kitchen towel and just stab it. And now I go in uh, on the lower half of the painting with a very light mix of the burnt orange and the ultramarine blue. Uh, it's the sky reflecting the snow, so uh, it's very, very light. And here I go in with a bit darker mix, but be careful to not make it, it too dark here in the beginning. And now I go ahead and put in some more orange in the water uh, down below, the water stream down below, and a little bit on the snow as well. And now it's time to paint the background trees. Uh, it, it's important to do this while the paper is still damp. Uh, because this gives just a very nice effect in the painting that the colors are mixing together on the paper. We don't get so many hard edges then. And that looks quite nice and a, a bit blurry and we want that because it's the background. And here I'm just making some highlights with my brush um, and because the paper is still damp it, it, was, it will mix together on the paper and not be too harsh to look at. But I will come back and work on this guy area later on in the painting so no biggie.
And now it's time to work on the shore. And here I go in with a dark mix of the ultramarine blue and the burnt orange. It's not too dark, uh, but like the background trees, but uh, there's some color in. <laughs> and I go in on the other side of the water stream as well. There will be some re reflections here from um, bushes and trees, so I just paint that in as well now. And here I, I go in with the yellow color and some of the orange as well. And of course we need some of the blue sky as well in the water. And I just go in again and take off some of the color again. Sort of working back and forth, put in color and take some away again, just to get the right uh, hue in the painting. And since everything is, is wet, it flows together, so you can just adjust with a damp brush. And now it's time to paint in the first layer of paint on the trees. And I go in with a light or medium mix uh, between the ultramarine and the burnt orange. And I'm just painting one tree at a time. I don't want the colors to flow together on the trees. So I just uh, swift between trees. So uh, I don't paint trees uh, very close to each other. Now I have mixed a darker brown, again the ultramarine, with the burnt orange. And this is the tree standing closest to you, or the tree that's in the foreground. So I want this to be darker than the other trees and more defined as well. And now I go in with an even darker mix of the orange and the ultramarine. And I'm also beginning to paint in some branches of the tree. And this I do with a quite dark color as well. Now I'm just putting in a more orangey mix of the blue and orange on the branch. So it will look more like the, the rest of the tree. Then I go in with some color on this one, and dark. Orange. And now I have changed my brush to a number 3 bigger brush. This is quite a good brush for making really, very light branches. And now I've changed my brush again to a number 6 round brush. And now I can make some more trees. And all the trees are painting with a mix between the ultramarine blue and the burnt orange. And again, I go in with my little brush to make some 
smaller branches down in the garden of this tree. There's a lot of branches uh, on this side of the painting where the trees are. And here I go in with a very dark mix of the burnt orange and ultramarine. And I darken this tree even further. I'm using my size 6 round brush. And now I felt like it was getting too dark, so I put in some highlights with a damp, clean brush. And now it's time to work on the riverbank again and darken the edge along the river. And this is also a dark mix between the uh, ultramarine blue and the dirt orange. <laughs> and I just take a damp brush and go along the edge so I, I will allow the colors to flow a little bit. And now I'm working a little bit on the snow. And this is also ultramarine and burnt orange, but uh, with more blue in the mix than burnt orange. I just used the uh, orange to uh, make the blue color a little bit darker, uh, and also because this is a shadow area. Uh, and yeah, I go in and put in some shadow areas as well under the trees. And now I go to the opposite side and put in some shadow areas as well with the same color blue. And up here I'm just making the color lighter with putting more color into the mix. And now I have mixed an even darker blue that I put in as shadow by the trees because there's quite a big uh, or a large shadow area over on that side. And now I go in with a dark brown color on the opposite side of the river bank. And also a little more light mix in places, some places in the river banks. There's some shadows from the trees uh, reflecting in the water. So I make that effect with the, a very light brown mix. Now I also wet my brush and uh, soften the colors and the edges of the colors. Now I work some more with the trees and I go in with a brown mix and darken the trees a little bit in the background. Sort of just building the painting up first with a light layer and then I put on darker and darker layers and The good thing is that you can look at the whole painting uh, When you got 
your first layer of colors in and then you can see where you think there needs to be some more dark places and some more light areas in the painting. Here I go in with a darker orange mix um, just to make some bushes in the snow. They are sticking out of the snow. So I begin with the lightest layer first. And then I will come back uh, later on with some darker colors. Now I go in with my river brush to make some nice thin branches. It's really good for doing this job. So, and I again I begin with a, quite a light layer and then I build it up with darker layers. Now I want to put in some shadow areas further up in the painting and I'm doing that with a dark mix of ultramarine and burnt orange. And now it's time for some splatter. This can really give the painting a, quite a nice effect. And this is also a dark brown I'm going inward. And now I find my spritzer bottle. <laughs> and then I just give it all a spritz. And then just to make uh, the colors flow some more. I help her a little bit along the way with my brush. Uh, it was not quite acting the way I expected, so I had to give it some help with my brush. Now I go in and make some shadow areas with a light mix of a dark blue. I mix the ultramarine blue mixed with some. Yes, you guessed right. Here I go into the foreground with some burnt orange, but the water will mix and now with some more colors. Just want to find the foreground again and put in some more colors. I thought it was looking a little bit pale, so and I go always go in with a damp brush afterwards to blend things. Now I've changed to my number two brown brush. It's quite a fine line as well. Now I want to paint in some dark uh, bush branches down here. And this is quite a dark mix of uh, ultramarine and burnt orange.
now I have switched to uh, number three or four brush I can't remember uh, but this is uh, this brush is not that pointy and it's very good for lifting off paint so now I'm lifting off the paint uh, in the trees in the foreground because I felt like they were too uh, compact and dark uh, and uh, the light is reflecting on the tree as well so I just go in with a damp brush and lift up some paint and I continue with this brush to blend in some hard edges it's just uh, damp and uh, yeah I just rub it on the paper you could also use a paper towel I think I will do that later on in the water actually so but this brush is very nice if you want to be more precise with where you are removing some colors I'm also taking off some colors of the trees in the backgrounds uh, because I don't want them all to be the same color it gives more life to the painting if there's a difference in the colors and uh, yeah it's like that in nature um, it's not just one compact color on on a tree because there's like reflections everywhere sunset to have a little bit stronger yellow color so now we're going with the yellow and I make sure to soften the edges with a damp brush Yeah, I'm using a size 2 round brush and I just sort of swipe the brush to make some branches and it's a very dark mix uh, of the ultramarine blue and the burnt orange. I'm going in with a wet paper towel to remove some larger areas of paint just to uh, make the colors blend some more on the paper um, yeah actually I'm removing some of the hard edges and now I go in again with a little more color around the sun and this is the burnt orange not too strong but not too light either and I just uh, yeah and then I dab it a little bit with a paper towel because I still want the center of the sun to be as white as possible and I always go in uh, afterwards and with a damp brush because we don't want hard edges in the sunset and now for the last thing you do in a painting put in your name And my paper is just very bulky at the moment, so I have to bend it a little. But let me just show you what I do to press my 
watercolor paper. I have two gypsum boards where I've taped the edges with some duct tape. Then I put on some paper towel, then I turn the painting around, and then I take my spritzer bottle and then I wet the paper very good. It's very wet. Um, and then I take another layer of kitchen towel and put on top of this. And then I take the top gypsum board and put over the whole thing. And then I have a big box of large heavy books and I put that on top of the whole thing. And then I leave it there for two to three days.